and welcome to Kylie and Tina's handwritten tutorials. Today we will be talking about the motor loop through the basal ganglia. In the last tutorial we learned about the anatomy of basal ganglia. In this tutorial we will be discussing the functional anatomy of these structures. The basal ganglia are associated with a variety of functions including motor control, procedural learning, eye movements, cognitive and emotional functions. These various functions are accomplished by distinct but interconnected circuits through the basal ganglia. In general, four circuits are identified. The visual loop involves the posterior regions of the caudate or the body and the tail of the caudate. This region receives afferents primarily from brain structures associated with high level visual processing. The limbic loop involves the nucleus accumbens which receives innervation from cortical regions associated with motivational processes, such as the amygdala. The cognitive loop involves the anterior region of the caudate. This region receives cortical afferents primarily from regions associated with executive functions. And finally, the motor loop involves the putamen, which is primarily innervated by cortical motor regions, such as the primary motor cortex and the premotor cortex. Today we will be focusing on the latter. Through the motor loop, the basal ganglia act to modulate motor movements through the balance of two pathways. The direct pathway and the indirect pathway. We will begin by discussing the direct pathway. This pathway functions to increase the excitatory drive from the thalamus to the cortex. ultimately increasing motor activity. In this pathway, neurons arise from the primary, premotor, or supplementary motor cortexes and form synapses with medium spiny neurons in the striatum, typically the pudibin. The cortical projections to the striatum use the neurotransmitter glutamate. This neurotransmitter excites the medium spiny neurons. In turn, the neurons in the striatum secrete the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA from their axon terminals into the globus pallidus internal. Neurons in the globus pallidus internal are normally tonically active GABAergic neurons that project to the ventral anterior and ventral lateral thalamus collectively known as the motor thalamus. More inhibition of these neurons results in less inhibition of the motor thalamus. This reduction in inhibition is referred to as disinhibition. Neurons in the thalamus synapse with neurons in the cortex. The neurons in the thalamus use glutamate as a neurotransmitter. Since the neurons in the thalamus receive less inhibition, they will increase the amount of glutamate released at the motor cortex, thus increasing motor activity. So the end result of the direct pathway is increased firing of the motor cortex. The Andra nigra pars compacta contains dopamine releasing neurons that project heavily to the striatum. Within the striatum, there are two broad varieties of neurons those that express D1 receptors, and those that express D2 receptors. Striatal neurons in the direct pathway express D1 receptors that are excited by dopamine. Therefore, dopamine excites the direct pathway and favors activation of motor movement. The striatum also contains acetylcholine secreting interneurons, which synapse on GABAergic neurons. This ultimately excites striatal cells, which inhibits the direct pathway and reduces motor activity. 
The indirect pathway functioned to decrease the excitatory input from the thalamus to the cortex and ultimately decreases motor activity. In this pathway, neurons arising from the primary, premotor, or supplementary motor cortex form synapses with medium spiny neurons in the striatum, typically the putamen. The cortical projections to the striatum use the neurotransmitter glutamate, which excites the medium spiny neurons. In turn, the neurons in the striatum secrete the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA from their axon terminals in the globus pallidus external. The neurons in the globus pallidus external are normally tonically active GABAergic neurons that project to the subthalamic nucleus. Increased inhibitory activity of the globus pallidus external results in less inhibition or disinhibition of the subthalamic nucleus. The subthalamic nucleus contains tonically active neurons that secrete glutamate at their axon terminals in the globus pallidus internal. Increasing the firing rate of the gabardic neurons in the globus pallidus internal leads to more inhibition of the motor thalamus and less stimulatory input to the motor cortex. The end result of the indirect loop is increased inhibition of the thalamic neurons and decreased activation of the motor cortex. Again, recall that the substantia nigra pars compacta contains dopaminergic neurons that project to the striatum. Striatal cells involved in the indirect pathway express D2 receptors, which are inhibited by dopamine. Therefore, dopamine inhibits the indirect pathway and favors motor movement. Striatum also contains acetylcholine secreting interneurons that sit on GABAergic neurons. Excitation of the cholinergic striatal cells excites the indirect pathway and reduces motor activity. Collectively, the indirect and direct pathway function to modulate motor movements. Therefore, their dysregulation is the hallmark in several important pathological conditions, including Parkinson's disease.